Okay, so welcome everybody. My name is Linda Cullett and welcome to my channel, Heal Within. Um, I am a mental health expert. I help people with anxiety and obsessive compulsive disorder. And I'm so happy today to be joined by Adam. Um, and Adam's going to share his story. Hi, Adam. Hi, Adam's yeah. going to share his story of his recovery from OCD. Um, so thank you, Adam, for joining me today. I'm really appreciative that you actually taken the time and to share how your journey was with other people potentially that's sitting at home that's going through and suffering with OCD. Well, I'm happy to be here. Brilliant, thank you. So <laughs> do you want to tell me a little bit about, I suppose, when you started feeling that there was something not, you know, you didn't feel so good, when did this actually happen for you? Okay, so this probably happened for me, I'd say about four years ago. I was... Um, I say it was in when sixth year, yeah, I was in sixth year in school. I think it was it. I was doing my leaving cert, and I kind of it started to. I started to know there was something weird, but I didn't actually. I couldn't put my finger on it. Just something changed, and uh, I was just getting all these in, intrusive thoughts. So I wasn't able to. I I was still like functioning. I was fine, but I was just. But I wasn't dealing with it or anything. I was just pushing it away. I'm like, oh, it's just thoughts. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. And I'd done that for maybe a year. And then I was like, okay, right, this is, I need to stop pushing this away. I need to go do something about it. But I wasn't really that pushed on it. Like, I just wanted to go and say, right, I'll go do something and it'll be grand. Like, they'll give me medication or something. Like, that's the thing they do. And uh, so I went to the doctor and they sent me to, uh, first of all, they told me to come back in a week and then I went, I went back in a week and then they were telling me, they gave me like a list of uh, counsellors around the area and stuff. And I chose one and I went to her and I think I went twice and I was like, I can't do this anymore. I was like, it just, it just wasn't. Why that was? Like, can I ask why uh, that was? Why, why was it? I don't know. I just, I think for the first one, because I went to two counsellors. The first one I went to, I just couldn't click with her. I just... Uh, she was very uh, kind of soft with me if you get me it was just real like so tell me your problems and uh, I was just like it just wasn't working like because yeah. I was telling her I was telling her what was wrong and she was like oh I hope you're okay like, yeah, and you know, you know that that's her way and you know and that's all right but it's just that I suppose sometimes we go through a few people we feel like we actually connected with someone but just when you talk about that you had it for about a year was it before you ever ever like went for any help at all yeah yeah it was about a year i left it for a year and what kind of symptoms did you have during that year like how did you cope with that because for me after go having ocd myself i know that it's so hard to um to cope with these feelings you know it's a feeling that's so severe yeah. and hard to, to cope with so how did you deal with that and what were your symptoms at that time uh, so the way I first of all my symptoms were it was just it, they were really obsessive thoughts and they were substituting. So I'd kind of get a thought and I'd have to I had to find out why I'm thinking and why I'm thinking and why I'm thinking. And then once I found an excuse for the thought, something else would come in. It would replace all the time. So it was like a cycle for me. And uh, the way I dealt with them was I just kind of I pushed them away for the first year. I just said to myself, oh, it's going to be grand. Eventually, it will go away. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. And then after a year, um, I just kind of said, right, it's been a year now. Let's go try and sort this out. But it wasn't because I said it to my mom. And my mom was like, why don't you go talk to someone about it or whatever? Yeah. And uh, like I didn't go into detail what it was yeah. or anything. I was just like, mom, I'm, I'm feeling a bit shit, blah, 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 yeah. blah. And uh and did you, like, know that, did you know that this was like in, in OCD or did you like start yeah. researching yourself? Did you do any? Did you I know? hadn't a clue. I just started, I actually, I didn't even research at the time. I just like kind of, because uh, the first year I didn't research into it. The second year when I was gone, when I actually went to someone and I wasn't working, then I was like, right, this has to be something different. Like it's just, it, it talk therapy. I thought if I go talk to someone, it's going to be fine. So I started researching and I went, uh, it said, oh, CD. And then after I went to, I told, sorry. 
just lost. Yeah, I started researching, and it said um, it could be OCD. So I was like, okay, I thought OCD was this clean and thing. Like this is the thing what everyone thinks it is. Like uh, yeah. it's a uh, how could it be OCD? And uh, so I just kind of I kept researching. I was looking more into it, and uh, I stopped going to the counselor and went back to the doctor. And I was saying to them here, blah, blah, blah. And they like, gave me uh, medication. So I was like, right, grand, going to be fixed. Medication, this is the way it is. And uh, took meditation for about five months. And I'd say it made me worse. Really? Yeah, I'd say it made me worse. How did it make you worse, do you feel? Um, I felt that... <sighs> It was still like it wasn't work. It wasn't working at the start, and then I start getting really bad side effects from it, yeah. and the side effects are endless off it. And um, like I remember, I was getting really bad uh, sleep paralysis and stuff, and it would be of the thoughts I was thinking. Okay. And yeah, so sleep paralysis is like kind of like kind of kind of like nightmares, and uh, you get stuck in your nightmare, and you have to kind of like the way I was doing, I had to scream myself out of it, and I was getting them every night, and it was nightmares of the thoughts and stuff. Right. So I was like, right, I need to stop uh, uh, taking this. Like, this isn't like good for me at all. Yeah. And uh, I was getting really bad mood swings. So I was getting um, kind of what else would I say? I was really, I wanted to be really alone a lot. Like, I didn't want anyone to be near me. I didn't want to. I lost all motivation. I wasn't able to do. Like, I'd sit in my room. Like, right, I can't get up. Like, I just can't do anything today. I'm just gonna sit in bed all day. I don't want to move and uh yeah so the medication i decided to come off it and did you get like any relief in terms of the intrusive thoughts when you took the medication um, like, you know, at night time you had obviously the nightmares which is like you know which is worse like you know through the night to night because i suppose when you have ocd as well when it's quite severe i know for me the only relief at the time i got was my sleep was really like a time yeah, sleep that's what me uh, that's what was mine as well for the first year sleep was my thing and then when I started taking the medication it was following me into my sleep and that's when I started going mad like I was like I can't deal with this anymore and because I was having the nightmares it would I was still getting the intrusive thoughts now the reaction wasn't as bad and I wasn't there uh, kind of like checking all the time trying to find the solution of why I'm thinking but the thoughts were still there like it wasn't they weren't going away mm -hmm. So what kind of would you say, and Renee, just if you can share with people like around what you believe is OCD and what you've learned over time, how it, how it has been for you. You know, we might think of when we see OCD, you know, we might have seen something on a film or the television, we would see someone washing or constantly cleaning. And, but there's so much more, I think, that's quite hidden and that's quite, we don't know about it because I suppose that when you see someone doing that, it's physically they have to do it, they have to check. So it's taken up consuming their life, whereas some people can just experience intrusive thoughts without having any compulsion, physical compulsion that we might think of as an issue. Um, so do you want to share a little bit about kind of your experience with that? Yeah, so OCD in my, at the start, I thought it was a cleaning kind of thing. Like that's the way it's portrayed, like, Oh, if you're cleaning something, someone's like, "Oh, you have OCD." Now that is the case; like, it is that it would yeah. sort of for some people. Yeah. But a lot of the time, it's actually, it's like a very silent kind of thing in someone's head. Like, it's mm -hmm. for me, it was, I'd have a thought, an intrusive thought, and I'd have to find out why I'm thinking that. I'd have to find out why, why that thought is in my head, and over time. I start to feel uh, to understand like all these thoughts were like things I never wanted to happen, so they were fears. Mm -hmm. So um, I had to find out why I was thinking them, and I would like I torment myself, and I'd, I'd go and try to kind of go to like extensive lengths, so to speak, to try find out why I'm thinking that. Like I'd be at the start, I was googling, I was um, I'd bring up in conversations to people all. Oh, if you ever had that thought before or anything like that and uh just to see if anyone else was thinking so i could get a bit of reassurance hopefully yeah for, um why i'm having the thought yeah so i'm gonna was... carry up the thoughts would have fall around for you because you know there's very it doesn't really matter anyway because ultimately what it is is in thoughts and truths because it causes so much um upset and distress to the individual you know but the yeah. generally fall around our worst fears and can also be around 
potentially people we love as well. So that's why it's yeah. like, oh my God, why would I think something like that about someone I love, you know? Yeah. So like my my nature changed at different times, like um of periods of my life. So uh w- like one time I'd have maybe like it would be sexual thoughts. Mm-hmm. Next time would be um they'd be like harm thoughts, like or um I'm going to like like if they were going to harm someone. Yeah. Uh, another thing would be kind of checking for um how do I say like someone close to you it had like checking stuff like to check uh say how do I say it so say if you had like a girlfriend or something and checking all the time like oh my god is she doing something on me and you'd have to find out you'd have to find out all the time mm-hmm. and uh which goes into a relationship I know they call it relationship yeah. probably, but it's just another form of a fear you know there's just laying yeah. on them you know but it's just it's a fear something. and they all just it changed all the time and it would be something so small can trigger them thoughts and them fears mm-hmm. and then it would build up into something like it would manifest into it's going to happen and you actually feel like it's going to happen it's like it's like you're living in it but realistically it's all just in your head it's yeah. not actually it's a it's an illusion mm-hmm. and but it's very uh, real in that moment like it's completely yeah. like looking at and saying to someone you know the sky is is you're seeing a color and it's like blue you know what i mean and and, and it's so real to the individual that's what keeps while part of us know when we are in this place that we know that these thoughts are not real but in the moment what keeps them real is the fear and the anxiety that fuels these thoughts to make them feel like this is true this is me if i think it i must be true is probably the thing that we we pick up you know yeah so it's just it all it my, my they like they change all the time the nature did like it it's at the start it was something small uh uh like first of all like the sexual ones obviously they were that it's kind of testing your it's testing your morals more than anything mm. and uh you could go for then my mind would change from that then it would change to like harm or it would change to have I done something wrong um. I say if you were out and you were like, oh, did I do something bad to that person? Or and you'd have to like go and check with the person, make sure everything's okay with them, and uh, then make just make sure everything is sorted. Mm-hmm. And then it would be stuff like um, I'm trying to think what else there was. Yeah. Look, they just change, they chop and change all the time, and they can go from little to extreme yeah. as well. Yeah, but cause you so much distress and. Uh, pain in the process because your mind's consumed your day is probably consumed with this would you say like you before you ever started doing any treatment with me that you would have had would you say you had any kind of break between because I know for me when I had the intrusive thoughts like literally was obsessed obsessive obsessive meaning that there was like no relief sleep was my place to yeah have relief so the war for me constant, you know. So I don't know, did you experience that or did you get any kind of relief in between? Or was it constantly all day, every day, having these kind of intrusive thoughts and trying to figure them out and ruminate and the you know, the feeling they were, So there were there was like splints, I remember like after maybe two years, actually no, maybe three years, I did have like a splint, but you know, I was having intrusive thoughts, but like I how I was getting it the way I dealt with them was like they were following me all day, every day, and then I'd sleep, and that was me, my kind of thing. And then the way I dealt with them was, uh, as well, I drank a lot. That was the way I just dealt with them because I thought it just it, you weren't thinking about it as much. Yeah. Then when you stop drinking, the next day and the week it follows you on, and they they intensify then. And I went through a stage as well where I wasn't having intrusive thoughts that much, but then I was drinking a lot and trying to like stop it. And then when I was, like, the next day, I started getting intrusive thoughts about I'm going to die because I'm drinking so much. Mm-hmm. And uh, the, I'm, like, focusing. I'm like, oh, I'm going to be really unhealthy. I'm going to die really young, all this. And it was just a cycle. It was following me into literally everything, anything I was doing. And I'd be, like, focusing. Like, and then when I, what I was eating as well. It, well. I'd be, like, if I'd be eating something bad, I'm like, oh, that's going to affect me. So I'm going to die if I keep eating, I get in bad patterns. And then I'd have to, like try focus on eating really healthy and, and stop drinking and it's, it's just like it just followed me constantly and uh sleeping was the only way i got rid of it that's the way well really actually just 
manifested into you come when it comes to food and actually there's just the normal things that you know every day like you'd be like yeah. oh, you know this is just actually in my life everywhere so what else other therapy did you do so you don't talk therapy you talk the medication that didn't work for you what else did you do in terms of treatment yeah so i done talk therapy i done medication and then i went to they sent me to a psychiatrist and uh they kind of put me through like an analysis and stuff and uh I was like, they kind of, they weren't really helping in a sense. Like I was trying to tell them about, they were asking me about the thoughts and stuff and I was trying to tell them about and they were like, ah, you have social anxiety. And I was like, okay, but I was, by any chance do I have OCD? I was looking it up, like I was, I'm getting these really, really intrusive thoughts and I was telling them about it. She's like, nah, you have social anxiety. And I was like, okay. I was like, right. So that kind of like pushed me away a bit. I was like, Right, she didn't even listen to me a good bit. So, like, I just kind of, like, left it then. I kind of, like, gave up on all, like, kind of doctors and all that crack. So I started teaching myself. Uh, I bought a book and I taught myself CBT. And uh, I just kind of, I was just studying it a lot. And uh, I was just making it a part of my day to, like, look into it. And, uh, but my thoughts were still really intrusive and they were, the anxiety was still behind them, even though I understood what was happening. Mm. I just wasn't, it just wasn't working for me. Yeah, I found that for myself. Look, everyone has their own personal experiences. You know, this is not to say one fits all, you know, you find your own way. But I did know for me, when I don't CBT, it did give me the like to understand, okay, well, I uh, my mind is creating thoughts, the feelings are because of the thoughts, and you can kind of, you know, what's the evidence for? But when I found when I was in a highly state of having obsessive thoughts and my anxiety was gone through the roof, it was completely, it was like so foreign to me to try and think my way that these were anyway rational. Yeah, but it is. These were so true, you know, they were so, so true. But, um, but look, everyone has their own way, you know, and it's about finding what works for you and knowing that, okay, well, I found a way. So, um, so now tell me then what happened next. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I was living in America and uh, before the coronavirus and I was in a really heightened state of my intrusive thoughts. Like it was getting really bad because before I went over, they weren't as bad. But when I was over there, they were getting really bad and I was drinking every day. Like I was just constant over there because like I was, I was working, my cycle was just work, drink, repeat yeah and then i stopped drinking for a month when i was over there a whole month i just stayed away from everyone spent some time on my own and uh stopped drinking for a month and i just realized when i was sober i just kind of it's like jesus these thoughts are really really affecting my life and i'm starting to notice it now so i said right but the coronavirus happened and i was like right i'm going home anyway and I decided, right, I'm actually going to, like, hit this on, getting this sorted when I go home. Like, this is what I'm doing. This is my number one thing. I'm not moving anywhere. I'm not going traveling anywhere. I'm not doing anything else until I get this sorted because this is going to follow me into my life forever if I don't sort it out for once and for all. Because I did. I ran away from it a lot. And I just kind of said to my, I put it in the back of my mind and was like, that's just a part of me now. Like, that's it. There's no, there's no fixing this because it consumes so much of my life. Yeah. And, uh, I came home anyway, and within my, I'd say my first week, I came home, I Googled, I was like, OCD, I made sure I was looking for an OCD specialist, and you were the first person that came up, <laughs> and I gave you a ring, and I asked you what it was, and I actually thought it was going to be CBT, but it was completely different, it was breath work, and it was something I was completely foreign to, like I'd never done anything like that before in my life. And it was just, it, I found it really interesting when I heard you say it because I thought it was going to be, oh, it's another CBT kind of thing, but it was something completely different. Yeah. So now tell me how you are today, I suppose, and how you've been, how long have you been doing the treatment now? So what do you yeah. think, like in terms of really, you know, for people to know that when I work with people, it's about empowering, you know, I've empowered Adam, like I've empowered you with tools. So you don't have to rely on me for every day or every week, you know, mm -hmm. you have the tools and what they do ultimately is to change the nervous system because that's where the issue is. It's that the nervous system, they were constantly being in this reactive mode, reactive response. So it's very deep at a subconscious level that we actually work on, but does it through the breath. So 
did you find that like the treatment I do was kind of like, how did you find that in terms of having to take responsibility while I taught you the techniques, but then it was up to you to actually put them into practice. Yeah. So the, at the start, it, like at the end of the day, it, it's the same, like you get out what you put in. And uh, I remember I done my first one with you and I was like, right, I need to focus on this. Like you just need to focus on it. You know, it's something completely different that you've never done, but just focus on it. And first few days I was doing it and then as the like weeks went on I started to enjoy it mm-hmm. it was a uh, because it, another thing it was it put a structure into my life where it gave me a responsibility of like if you want to feel good you have to stick to this mm-hmm. and you have to do it and you have to ride the course and then so I've been doing it for like four nearly four months now yeah and uh, you build yourself up obviously and you start off low with your minutes and then you build yourself up and you strength you, you, it's like it's like anything you're training yeah and then as time goes on you go up and i'm on 31 minutes now and 11 seconds yeah, right. and <laughs> i was on what was it five minutes or six yeah, minutes no, and five exactly. seconds yeah, yeah. exactly so you really improved you know but and yeah. have you seen it then how have you seen what you do every day and what you're doing with this breath work, how have you seen the changes with the intrusive thoughts? Yeah, so not even the intrusive, my whole life, like really, because it put a structure for me. And uh, so the intrusive, uh, over time at the start, you, can, you can't just expect to be, no. it's going to be great at the start. Like, And there is times as well where you, you might get a bounce back mm-hmm. and uh, th- these things happen, like it's like anything and uh but over time you you start i noticed this is something different like i haven't got this relief from anything else that i've tried and i've tried things and it just didn't work out mm-hmm. and uh over time you start to realize it you start to like look back and you're like jesus i was in a situation there and that actually didn't bother me mm-hmm. that much and it's like jesus, it's actually working like mm-hmm. and just like little things you start to realize and um it's it, it's good but and it's just like it's just really refreshing to know that there's something so pure as well instead of you have to go to do medication and all you're doing is breathing mm-hmm. and that's what fixes it mm-hmm. and it just it changes your reaction completely and you notice it as well mm-hmm. um to the and thoughts fact, you know what it's great like while you're like you're still doing it you don't have to do it for life but you do it to a period of time but like to know that like you are empowered that no matter where you go Adam if you decide to travel when you can travel and different things happens that you are empowered for life you don't want to have to do it for life but to know that to have peace of mind and to know that you can actually empower yourself and the reaction changes because when we talk about OCD we people come generally to say I want to get rid of the thoughts I want to get rid of the thoughts and that's completely natural at the start. But ultimately, what you want to heal is the reaction to the thoughts. Because when yeah. you heal the reaction to the thoughts, the thoughts no longer come back because they lose. They're only coming back because it's the reaction that given the brain the signal to keep yeah, let off, the yeah. person know that's, that's danger. Let them know, let them know. So when you see, think about it, that when you start balancing the nervous system, which is done not via talking. Talking is very important. We need talking to support each other. That's yeah. more human. We need to connect. But it takes something very deep to root this up from the nervous system. And that's what the breath work, in my experience, has done for me and also has done for you and will continue to do for you. So would yeah. you feel like your life has a lot, you know, I'm not saying it was bad before because we don't want to say you're like, <laughs> but would you say that like your life in terms of, I suppose, your mental health, has significantly improved oh yeah 100 percent. like yeah and yeah, at the end of the day like this kind of was just a it's a stepping stone for me like i just find that like it, it's del- made me de- delve deeper into myself like i kind of like i i like to now like i write a lot and i just write and i like to, i like to be with my mind a lot and understand like why i'm thinking things and understand like the reality of things and they're not actually what you think like you're not your mind Mm-hmm. Like I actually have, I have a tattoo on my back saying the mind is everything you become what you think. Okay. So like uh, you do you do like it, you just have to realize it's a mindset thing as well. Because yeah. once you start doing the breath work, it kind of leads to other things and like opens your mind. Well, for me, I open my mind and I start take, uh, delving deep into all this mindfulness stuff. Yeah. And, uh, 
Because more mental yeah. energy, don't you? If more mental energy to go, okay, what actually do I like to do and what am I interested in? That was with me as well. Like, yeah. I've been into any of this stuff, but once you start, you're like, wow, well, I'm so interested in the power of the mind because it can bring up all the stuff from the years ago, fears, et cetera, et cetera. But also we can, once we heal that, we can actually enhance what we, it is we really want to do and focus on that as well, you know? exactly yeah it's it, no it's just it it's great like it, it for me it's changed my life completely yeah like brilliant i haven't there's there's no nothing has compared to what to it like what i what you've done for me like for me. Pardon? <laughs> what you nothing's from? compared to it like what what you've done for like you've done for me like because it's, it's just a, a great help oh, and like i hope that i need like everyone that need is gone through this they need to see this yeah. the effects that it does for people yeah. yeah that's brilliant and would you have anything you'd like to share with anyone potentially that is you know well there is people suffering with this as we know um and you know i suppose my role in this and obviously yours is to why we do this is to bring this awareness to people even if they never do the treatment i'm not saying to do this treatment do whatever that suits you but to know that you're not alone you know because i feel like there's so much hidden around intrusive thoughts and people feel like I can't share it because I don't understand. I get that. Not everyone will understand it. We don't expect people to understand it, but we do expect that they're yeah. supportive because it's not, you know, it's, it's, it's a mental health issue, you know, like any other issues. So would you have anything you'd like to share with anyone that potentially, yeah. will, you know, sitting at home or suffering at the moment with intrusive thoughts? Yeah. So, lots of things so first of all uh i definitely say to you like kind of reason with yourself in a sense where to say your mind can think of anything like it's not you aren't your mind like they, they, these thoughts these can be these they can really test you and they can really test like a person you are and they'll try challenge you and make you believe that you're something you're not but don't for don't give in to the thoughts and don't say right this is me now like because once you do that, you start becoming someone you're not. Mm-hmm. Um, the second thing I would say to someone is definitely don't be afraid to go and get help. And I think the likes of, I wouldn't like the way I went about, I went to a doctor now, like a doctor, like doctors not going to know what I'm going through. Like how they're not going to know how to fix it. Mm-hmm. Like they, they don't, they, they haven't been through it. So the likes of you, you've been through it you can help people you're not going to be judged so go get the help but go get it off the the appropriate person go like look up someone like an ocd specialist to do it don't go to like maybe a doctor who's going to give you a medication or send you to a counselor and like counsel not all counselors are going to be able to help you with stuff like that because they're not trained in doing that they're trained to like some of them are trying to listen to you mm-hmm. and um what else would i give the advice just just go and get help. Don't be afraid. And don't, you're not on your own. And don't be afraid to speak to people about it because it's, it's a, like a, talking to someone can be like a, a real benefit. Like I know me, I never talked to anyone about it. I really just didn't want people to know. I didn't want to be judged. And I just wanted to, I was like, I was very stubborn in a sense where I was like, I'm, I'm dealing with this on my own. I'm going to beat this on my own. Where you can't, you can't just sit there your whole life and, have all these thoughts and expect it to like go away. It's not going to go away. So just go get help and don't be afraid to talk and just be yourself and do it. Like there's nothing yeah, else. No, we're all human at the end of the day. So we are all here to help each other ultimately. Yeah. Um, and to show compassion to other people, even if it isn't something we understand, but that, that, that when you speak up, you might feel like, Oh, what will someone think of me? But like, in fact, they'd be very much um, have empathy for you, I would think, you know, if you go to someone that, yeah. you, know, that you can, that, that like your close one trust, you know? Yeah, I know like the, na- the nature of your thoughts, they might be really, really bad, but trust me when I say it, they're nothing. They're actually, no matter how bad these thoughts are, they actually aren't anything. Yeah. Just talk. That's good. That's good now. <laughs> Four months later, of course. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but even like I used to reason with myself and say, right, they're nothing. But I'd still say, no, but they are something. It's yeah. like it's like the two people in your mind, and it's you're you're fighting an uphill battle. And one thing as well, do not fight it. 
the more you fight and run away from it, the stronger it's going to get. And even if you get away for it, from it for a year, it's going to come back because like, you haven't dealt with it. You need to face the problem. Like you need, and as scary as it is, mm. you, you need to face it because if you run, you can only run for so long because it's going to keep coming back. You need to face it. Yeah. And I do see a lot of people might have a distraction mechanism, you know, so they distract themselves, keep them busy, you know. But as yeah. we know that, at the end of the day, like, you know, you might say when you are in your room going to bed at night, you know, you are on your own. We want to get used to being in our own space and then yeah. it's comfortable in our own mind because there is nothing, you might think, oh, I'm afraid to be on my own, but actually you're sitting with yourself. So you're afraid, obviously, of these thoughts and, and, and we know that that creates, obviously, anxiety and that's what we really don't like. Of course, who wants to feel anxious, you know, all the time. Yeah. So thank you so mean. much, Adam, and you've been You're great welcome. and well done. You should be so proud of yourself for really, you know, being very disciplined, being dedicated, being curious and, um, you know, never giving up, I suppose, would be one thing. And always knowing that, you know, something inside you really felt like, and that was the same with me, I tried loads of different things, but something inside me was like, you know, you have to keep up and keep luck and never give up. And that's really, I think, the message for people. 100%. You know, is keep there is something that is definitely one of the main things. Yeah, there's something out there that's gonna help you. It's just you find what works for you and you keep doing it until you start feeling better. But thanks so much because you're an inspiration. Thanks so much for sharing your journey with everyone because you know, the more people we have thank you. you, you know, the more people we have like you that's open and talk about it, the more we can actually spread our message out there, the more we can help more people and that's ultimately what we're here to do, isn't it? Exactly. That's that's the goal. We want everyone to understand about this and be aware of it. Exactly. Yeah, that's brilliant. So thanks so much for your time, Adam. Well, thank you very much for your time. And yeah. I hope everyone's okay. Stay safe. Brilliant. Thanks so much for joining us and uh, for sharing all your, your words of wisdom and your encouragement to others out there. Okay, Adam. Thank you. Yeah, talk to you soon. Take care. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.